All right, so you should be joining me from the previous video where we looked at some of the properties of limits, things that we can do algebraically with limits. Okay, so um, hopefully you took a brain break because it, it was time, I'm sure. All right, um, at the bottom of those notes, um, you'll see the word examples, and we're going to do one example of finding a limit analytically using all the properties. Sometimes you'll see the um, function inside parentheses and sometimes not. But at least this way we can really see that we're finding the limit of this whole expression as opposed to just without parentheses the limit of 4x squared and then the plus 3 on the outside of the limit statement. So sometimes you see parentheses, sometimes not. We just have to kind of pay attention to that. All right, there were some properties you had up here. Um, so we're going to use those properties. We're actually going to find this answer the long way using all the properties just so you can see the value of those, those things that we can do. Uh, and then we'll do four additional examples on the back of these um, notes or on your own notebook paper, whichever you choose. All right, so let's do this limit the problem the long way. Um, first, let's get the answer the short way mentally. Um, what you're going to do is you're just going to plug 2 in. So doing the computations when you plug 2 in, Looks like 2 squared, 4, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 plus 3 is 19. Our answer should be 19 no matter what method we use. The shortcut method is going to be the preferred method, um, but I just, like I said, I want you to see the value of the properties and why we can do what we can do. All right, so the long way on this one only. All right, so thinking about the properties that we had previous, we have that sum and difference property of limits that says the uh, limit of a sum is equal to the sum of individual limits. So because I have two terms in here, remember terms are what you add and subtract, okay, I'm going to go ahead and separate. Then I'm going to give each term its own limit statement. All right, so if you think about uh, one of the basic limits that we had at the very top of these notes, because this is a constant, a horizontal line at 3, it doesn't matter what x approaches, this answer is always going to be 3. So at least this part's done. Looks like we can apply some more properties here. I see a scalar, a multiplier, a number, not a variable, but a number. So I'm going to pull that out front. I'm left with a power. Okay, we have a power property. We'll take care of that in the next step. So just drag this other limit down until we're ready to uh, evaluate it. Okay, your next step here is going to be to tackle the power. So we still have the scalar on the outside, just a multiplier. We're going to pull the square on the outside and just find the limit of x as x approaches 2. Uh, it looks like we've applied all the properties that we can, so now it's time to just evaluate. So we have 4 times. Okay, now inside here, as x approaches 2, that's one of the basic limits. Just plug in 2 for x, drop the limit statement, so that becomes um, just 2 but don't forget the square on the outside. Plus, over here, that basic limit at the top says that that limit is 3. Okay, and then um, just completing the computations, we know that this is now 16 plus 3, or 19. Okay, and it would look nice if we could drop this down here and put the limit statement next to the equal sign. Not necessary, but it sure does look nice. Okay, so we found 19 the long way. We're going to do four additional examples, and we're not going to do this the long way. We're just going to actually do a direct sub in and, and be done with the problem. So if you want to get a clean sheet of paper out and uh, write these next four examples on that, that's fine. Or if you want to just turn these notes over and use the back, that's fine too. That's what I'm going to do. All right, so we're just going to practice finding limits analytically. That's just a fancy way to say substitute it in. All right, we're going to work with this rational function. Remember, rational just means uh, ratio, means fraction. Okay, we're always going to be concerned whenever we're dealing with a rational function because we might end up dividing by zero. Okay, and it's not a problem if we divide by zero as long as the numerator's not zero because then we know the answer is D and E. But it's when we get zero over zero 
which we call indeterminate, that requires that we do more work on a problem. And that was that that's going to show up in a, in, a, in a later video. All right, so let's just go ahead and plug one in everywhere we see x. Okay, performing the computations, it looks like we have four on top, two on bottom, so my answer is two. All right. It's okay not to rewrite this, drag this down and set it equal to two. This work follows. It looks nice. All right, let's work with a radical, a key root. Okay, so what's the y value? What are the y values going to as x approaches three? Notice we don't have a superscript, so we just plug in three. Hope all works out well. Drop the limit statement. Okay, perform the computations. Uh, three squared nine. Nine times two is eighteen. Eighteen minus ten is eight. So, oh, nice. Cube root of eight is two. That's nice. Uh, if it was 9, the cube root of 9 can't be simplified, you'd be done. The answer wouldn't be very nice, but it's still what it is. Okay, so no problem so far. Let's see what the next example holds. Okay, our, our favorite thing to work with, a trig function here. Uh, let's go ahead and substitute in pi over 2. So the tangent at pi over 2. All right. Well, that's going to require us to revisit the unit circle, so I'm going to do that work over here. Here's the unit circle. Pi over 2 is this angle up here at 90. Remember the ordered pair is 0, 1, x, and y. And then for us to do the calculations, we have to remember that tangent is y over x, so that's going to be 1 over 0. So immediately we know that the answer to this limit question is d and e does not exist. If you're asked to explain why, you would say there's a vertical asymptote there because of what this fraction reveals to us. Likely, you wouldn't be asked um, which infinities um, you're approaching, the positive or the negatives, but if you were, I don't think my strategy would be to plug in an angle um, close to pi over 2 on the left and an angle close to pi over 2 on the right. Um, that seems a little tedious. I would hope that maybe we can remember okay, what the tangent graph looks like. It does something like this and repeats. Okay, so this asymptote right here is at pi over 2. Uh, this one would be at 3 pi over 2. Okay, but we have what we need to answer the question of which infinity are you approaching if that was asked. If it's not asked, don't waste your time. If I approach pi over 2 from the left, my y values are going to infinity. If I approach pi over 2 from the right, then I'm jumping on the graph down here and my y values are going to negative infinity. So a description of this DNA would be actually both the positive and the negative infinity based on what we're viewing here. But again, like I said, if you're not, you're not asked to, to describe the infinities, don't do it. Just say DNA, you're done. Okay, one more example with trig. Okay, for this one right here, we're going to evaluate this at 4. So drop the limit statement, cosine of, so x becomes 4, so 4 pi over 6. Okay, this is again the unit circle. So let's go ahead and simplify that fraction to 2 pi over 3. So from the unit circle, what is the x coordinate at 2 pi over 3? So let's go back up here. Okay, 2 pi over 3. Well, here's pi over 3 right here. 2 pi over 3 is right here. So we know the x coordinate is going to be negative in quadrant 2, and the y coordinate is going to be positive in quadrant 2. So x is negative 1 half, and y is positive square root of 3 over 2. We're looking for the, tan, or for the cosine, and so that's the x, and so our answer is going to be negative 1 half. So this limit statement is equal to negative one half. Okay, so for this video, I just really wanted to focus on finding limits analytically, doing a direct sub in. Nothing interesting happened except for maybe right here we had a vertical asymptote. Okay, in the next videos, we're going to explore what happens when you get indeterminate and the action we should take 
um, after we get in determinate so that we can find the limit. Okay, so I'll see you then.